the new term, the new term for a lot of young people and for the senior and the seasoned orthopedic surgeons probably who have not heard about this term is extremely important. Radio synovio orthosis, RSO, simple terms, simple, very, very simple. And what is that? It is, it is a, a simple term, RSO, gives a, refer to a technique, which is already there on the slide. I don't need to really read it, but I will just go on anyway. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. we give into the joint a local application of a radioactive. It is not a dye. It could be, but it's a, uh, it's a you know, radioactive agent. But this is given in osteoarthritis. One, it is not just to relieve the pain, nor the discomfort, but we need to improve the inflammation so that the patient who is receiving it gets a better, you know, uh, uh, what shall I say, effect, pain-free, uh, you know, joint. So there are, this is not a new technique, to tell you frankly. It's been there for a long time now. It's about 40 plus odd years now. Many of the orthopedic surgeons are not even born when this technique was you know, uh, stipulated. There are a few reasons why it did not take up in the big way in those days because of the availability of the nuclear you know, uh, isotope, which was very, very restricted in many of the countries as well as in India. And uh, we need to have a governmental, uh, you know, uh, clearance to get those radioactive I mean, uh, the agents into because it's uh, very highly radiating. So we have to be very careful in those things. Keeping that in mind, yes, uh, you know, back in the 60s, when uh, Delabre talked about uh, this entire thing, to restore the knee joint in a better way by injecting the radionucleotides into the joint to make it a non-surgical or probably a radio sinorectomy kind of a thing term which was you know nomenclated those days and it was forgotten because of the availability of the centers in the country and the world as well so let me uh, run through that now yes the radio pharmaceutical industry has grown up in a massive way uh, uh, as dr ja mentioned earlier on a pet uh, ordinary ct to pet ct to pet mri and a lot of things have been done so keeping that in mind, what is that we use here? For uh, larger joints, we have Atrium-90 and uh, Renium and Erbium also available. But the majority of the joints which we talk about is into the knee joint today. So let us focus on the knee joint. Atrium-90 is the one which has been used in a big way. And what happens there? I mean, this colloidal injection causes you know, the phagocytosis, which is already there, which Manish talked about a lot of things in the past, uh, in, in, the, in his last few slides, and the changes which happened, what I also talked about, uh, in, in the condition, what happens with the pathogenesis, what, uh, you know, uh, Dilip talked. We try to give the injection, and then when the injection is given, it forms a sclerosis or fibrosis. The synovial stroma, the villi, will be affected, and then it gets devascularized and then the cartilage become thicker and you know pain free for them in the, it takes a few weeks to months for that to get the effect and yes there are this is going to be just a bird's eye view for you people uh, basically the dose again dose is variation because of the joint involvement will be different and again in the, in the knee joint we talk about 185 mega or 5m curie uh, atrium to be given and in a year you know, those, uh, those cannot be increased because the, like in a hyaluronic acid or a steroid, people have given repeated injections. But here, we need to be very specific and not to repeat too many times. So there has been a very clear cut understanding on that. That does not take too much time there. Uh, now, yeah, we talk about the dosage. We came there. 185 we talked about. So that is where the knee joint uh, atrium uh, dose will be coming to. And what happens? Can we give multiple joints, you know, both the knee joints or single uni or, you know, bilateral can be given? It can be, but again, we need to assess the, you know, uh, the dosage as well as the uh, patient's uh, body structure and they talk about it. So with that in mind, uh, yes, there could be good results. There may not be that so good results. There are a lot of reasons for that, but we need to make sure uh, how we can uh, differentiate it and take it forward. The second dose also can be given in about uh, probably eight to 10 months time. And uh, many a times 
when the osteoarthritis starts, people have also have injected into the cyst and it has regressed very, very you know, uh, beautifully there. So the side effects, yeah, like in any drug, no drug is uh, safe. So every drug is a poison in the true sense of term. Even this has some amount of side effects. Being in, a, 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 what shall I say, uh, injectable kind of a thing. Uh, so we need to be careful about the infection, make sure all the sterile precautions have been taken care. And then I don't think there's a major issue, but except some neoplasm has been documented, but they, we need to look into in a larger study. Contraindication, obviously, because the knee joint osteoarthritis is not limited to old age. Younger people can come in, even in pregnancy, people have had seen this. So this particular injection cannot be given in uh, you know, pregnancy and lactation. So that's very, very clear cut indication. And some of the conditions where we can indicate from rheumatoid arthritis, I know we are sort of talking about osteoarthritis, because all these things can give us a secondary osteoarthritis, hence the list have been put here. So these are the kind of uh, uh, precursors where osteoarthritis knee can be seen, so this can be used. And special precaution with hemophilix, uh, they should have a proper workup done. And now, the effect, we talk about how good is it. So naturally, we talk about the knee joint, 77% they have seen good results, and it's almost maintained that in the end of two years. So it is, it is, it is a very good uh, you know, thing to look into in the future. And definitely, there's a lot of study need to be done. Yes, there's going to be a lot of radiation comes into picture. So we need to be taking care of all those uh, precautions. And uh, the methods are also different. And how we're going to inject it and how we're going to dilute it. All those things have to be given. And one thing, as we talked about, any injection going into the joint can cause some of the inflammation. And thankfully, unlike in uh, a hyaluronic acid, uh, a steroid can be uh, utilized to reduce the inflammation uh, post radiation, you know, or what we call it as radiosinovia orthosis. So that is the biggest thing. And the side effects we want to talk about, I think, uh, leave it. Uh, it could be a simple infection. A joint infection is a very serious one. Simple, uh, you know, we have to be careful about. But we have to rule out the inflammatory response to infection that has to be made very very clear that has to be differentiated so that that has to be worked out and clearly explained to the patient and mind you we have to have a proper counseling and consenting and we need to have a regular and uh, follow so that patient gets a big uh, you know the cheerleader for us in the past radiologists used to be doing all the works the radio diagnosis today Thankfully, the rate of diagnosis has been super specialized, so we don't need to worry about he or she being pulled in different directions. Thank you. Thank you. With, my, uh, with this, I think I will probably uh, end my slide. And uh, thank you, Dr. Jair, and thank you, uh, Shiva, Naveen, and everybody to give me a, a bird's eye view on the radio synovial orthosis, what we talk about. Hopefully, uh, this should be able to give a uh, precursor for to do the future studies. Thank you.